Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter six talking about test tools and automation and we are done with all the tutorials associated with this particular chapter. Now continuing ahead with the next topic which is the sample questions of this chapter and we will be looking at another pattern here to understand that how exactly the questions can be asked to you from this particular chapter altogether. To get started, the very first thing is, of course, the type of questions and the number of questions which you can expect from this particular chapter. In this particular chapter, you can expect mandatory four questions, which are definitely the basic topics, uh, the 6.2.1, 6.2.2, 6.2.3 and 6.3.1, which is also having an additional selectable question. So probably that could be from 6.4.1. But putting it all together, you will have five questions from this chapter covering each and every topic. And you are expecting 1K4 from 6.2.3 and the rest all are K2. So just make sure that when it comes to 6.2.3, you have put your complete effort in order to understand that what exactly it is all about. In order to further understand, we are looking at a different example today that we are looking at exactly the way the examination will be asked to you during the final examination. They will actually share a pattern where they give you a common scenario and they ask you three to four questions together on the same scenario from different topics. The same thing we are just trying to apply in this particular chapter so that we can just make use of the same approach which will help you to analyze the examination question coming examination. So to get started, the very first thing is our scenario. And here you need to understand the scenario once for all and answer five or six different questions based on the same scenario. But of course, the questions will be different and probably from different topics or different chapters. But right now we are covering only six chapters. Just take a look on that. So the scenario here is being discussed. The most important thing when it comes to the test manager certification is that you try to make sure that you have derived the several outcomes from a particular scenario that what are the key highlights which help you to answer any particular question. So let's start reading the scenario first and take up the questions after that. So the scenario says you work for an international company that has nothing to do with the scenario. So don't highlight such things. Take care of the important things which are relevant to your syllabus. You work for an international company producing hardware and software for telecom networks. Hardware and software development are done in the separate business units. Now that's something important for you because there is a distributed team and working in different business units. So there might be a lot of things which you can come to your mind. So keep that an eye on. You are the test manager for one of the product line of the network router software. So you're just taking care of one thing and there are business units to manage the software and hardware. And you are the test manager for one of the product line, which is network router software. In your product line, there is a long tradition of creating tightly integrated product using an incremental product lifecycle. So I don't have to highlight actually everything. You can know for yourself that number one is that you are following a legacy system for the process where you create tightly integrated products with incremental product development. Okay, so these are things which you need to take an eye on that how exactly agile can impact something, how exactly you work with the properties of closely working within the team. And sometimes when you have two business units, how you have to coordinate. So there can be a communication gap or there could be something from the point of uh, information sharing. So just keep, you know, bringing everything as you read the uh, particular scenario. And just make sure that you have highlighted already those things which will help you to answer a question after the scenario. Now, the business unit schedules. Okay, sorry, let me just complete this. The hardware business unit produces a new version every six months. Your software product line aims to have a new version of the software ready for each new hardware version. That means you just comply with whatever the hardwares are being developed every time you deliver. You deliver a new software for meeting that expectation of the hardware. The software is developed in two months of increment. That means your sprint or your cycle of development is every two months and you release it six months. So that means there are three cycles which you follow. So keep deriving things as you read a scenario. The business unit schedules are synchronized during the design. That means both the business units are only synchronized during the design phase to avoid any kind of issues or misunderstanding. That's actually a good and benefit option. Your team consists of 15 testers who have been in the company for two years, but mostly a lot longer, like at least for two years, but people can be even for five years or 10 years and so. New tests are developed by the most experienced test analyst. That's really good. 
and as in in-house customs test scripts. That means we create all the scripts in-house by these people itself. Variation of the test and the regression test set are run by the rest of the team. So senior people only create them or you know create the scripts and rest all team members execute them, including the regression testing. The company management requires monthly progress report listing the number of severe defects found and the status of test execution. There have also been efforts to measure the efficiency of personnel in all business units, like how exactly every member of the team is uh, contributing to the overall process. So we have a parameter or matrix to measure that as well. Your company has also implemented CMMI on the company level. That means they are also looking forward to the process improvement every time we release something. There have been problems to keep up with the hardware development schedule. Now they have also added a problem at the end of the scenario that we have problems with the schedule on the hardware development part, which is like two months of cycle till the six months of time for the delivery. So people are unable to deliver that in the two months what they are supposed to deliver. So now you have been through the scenario. Keep it in mind because you may have to answer three to five questions in the real examination. Right now we have only two questions in our this tutorial just to help you. So let's move to the question here. The number one question based on that scenario is your company originally has built an in-house test automation tool as they anyway needed to build interfaces to derive the test script against their system to fulfill all the telecom standard requirements. Maintaining the in-house tool has gradually become very costly because every time you, you know that custom built has a feature that as you proceed with the new features of your product, the tool also has to be optimized to meet the expectations of the executions or managing the thing. Now an open source tool might uh, free time from you, test automation expert. You need to consider several factors before making this decision. So now you are opting to go ahead with an open source tool compared to your in-house custom build tool. But you have to consider certain factors before you decide to pick up the open source tool. Which of the following statements does not apply? Please keep an eye on these kind of things. They tell you the entire story. But the last line, they will just use one word which changes the entire meaning. And here they are saying the word not. That means looking at the four options below, you need to pick up that option which does not apply at this point of time when selecting a tool between the custom and the open source. So other three options must be relevant to that, which you should be considering. So start with the option A, the licensing terms need to be understood. I think that's very straightforward. If you know the difference between the custom built commercial and open source tools, open source tool does not require a license at all. So this is not a consideration uh, uh, which need to be taken care. But I think we are looking for the statement that does not apply. So let us look at the option once again. The option says uh, the licensing term needs to be understood. Of course, uh, it has to be considered in terms of like uh, requirements are not mentioned in the scenario. So what kind of requirements do you have? So maybe the features what the open source is providing you. So whether that is applicable or not. Um, and it is a valid concern in terms of like as you need to adapt the tool and maybe give rights for your adaptions to the open source community. If you remember that open source community requires you to uh, meet the expectation and depending on the licensing terms, you can have to declare that what exactly you're doing or what exactly the tool is being used for. So licensing terms, not the licensing cost. The cost is not involved here, but the terms has to be agreed upon by reading through and understanding that. So yes, A will be a concern to be discussed. B, the telecom standard compliance need to be considered. Of course, it is a telecom based project. The very first line says you that this project is all about telecom software and products. So of course, no matter which tool you make use of, you need to make sure that the telecom standard compliance is met by the tool. Otherwise, that tool cannot be utilized. So B is also a concern. C, open source tools have been created for a particular purpose. Generally, when you come to the open source tool, as you have your own specific purposes, sometimes the open source tool does not meet your expectation. And don't forget that you are trying to migrate from a custom built tool to an open source tool. So custom tool was completely meeting your expectation, but the open source probably cannot meet your expectation. So you need to evaluate the tool, conduct a POC in order to meet that. So yes, it is another concern. And I think now we are left with only the right answer here. D, open source tools are hard to adapt it. Hard to adapt is not a concern actually to be considered as a selection condition or decision to be made. Uh, open source tools can be modified. 
So it's not actually hard to adapt. And you have the capabilities to do that because you have already built your uh, custom build tool earlier. Now you're trying to migrate. So people are export there and the team can very well manage in terms of configuring, configuring the open source tool and several other things which are required to set up. Having earlier built custom tools definitely should not uh, care about adapting a new tool for you or making any kind of customization. So that's something which is weird to be selected at this point of time as a concern or decision to be made upon when moving to the open source tool. So the right answer here is D, open source tools are hard to be adapted, which is not a concern or an area of discussion to be uh, you know, considered for making any kind of decisions to migrate from custom built tools to the open source tools. Let's look at the second question from the same scenario. The scenario remains the same. If you remember, it's a telecom based product and you are following incremental in, uh, development lifecycle and uh, schedule problems are there from the development side and the cycle length is two months, but you release everything at the end of six months and uh, there is a synchronization at the design phase and so on. So you just have to recall that scenario or you can relook re into that. You have heard that another similar product or software product line within your company is using an open source tool. So in extension to the scenario, they are saying you that you have heard that another similar software product line, which is like within your organization is using an open source tool for their test automation, but you are using a custom build tool. They use it to automate roughly 50% of your test and execute the remaining test manually. That means they do have a constraint that using that open source tool, they can only automate 50% of them and rest 50% they are automating or sorry, executing manually. Now through the user interface of the software. Now you are requested to report if it is possible to select this tool for your product line as well. And what are your key concerns at this point of time? So you are already using a custom build tool. You heard that the similar software development business line is using an open source tool where 50% test can be automated and other 50% are manual. Now, what are your key concerns to be considered? Select two options. So let, let's start looking at the options here. Option A, how good is the support for the open source tool? Because they might be making use of it, but whether they have a right support there or not. So not your major concern, although good point to check in general, that if the vendor is strong enough, because the other business line faces a challenge, I should not also face the challenge, right? So I should evaluate myself that uh, whether the open source tool has a good support from the vendor or not because you don't want to get into the trouble if one business line gets into the trouble. So this cannot be like actually very important, but if you are talking about this option, I would say yes to it. Look at B, is the new tool user friendly? I think that's a really important concern when you talk about uh, being, uh, you know, testing or uh, checking that if the open source is user friendly, but cannot be so important as well if you think from the point of previous question that you are experts of building your own tool, then I don't think user friendliness really matters to any individual. So this could be another thing, which I cannot say like major area of concentration. So A and B both are ruled out as my key concerns, but in general, it is okay, but not the key concerns if I compare the other options. Let's look at C, if it is important than A and B. Okay, these are all important, but we may have the most important thing which you have to pick as the right answer. C, is it possible to execute some part of your test manually? Now, that's something really important for you to consider compared to other things. Why? Is it possible to execute some parts of your test manually? That means they have a scope of only 50% of automation. So is that you also have a scope that some of the tests can be executed manually or not? If you don't have a scope at all, like you don't have a people who can done, do the manual testing, then you can just ignore it. You cannot go for that open source tool because it can only automate your 50% of test. So of course, this is something which is my key concern to be discussed upon or looked into. So is it possible to execute some part of your test manually should be considered. Let's look at the next one D. How much time do you have to use for rewriting your existing test? Now existing test, you need to think about your existing large number of test cases as also the ROI concern. That means if your team has to rework on converting your automated script, which you are using as custom built right now, custom build tool. So they have to be converted in order to be accepted by the open source tool and languages can be different. So how fast, how much time do you have to migrate the test from your home 
in-house built tool to the open source tool. And that is again a key concern to be considered right now if you are trying to adopt a new tool just like the other one is using. So that is also a key concern. Let's look at E. What about the security issues of the tool? I think again, not a, your major concern of the security point of view, but yes, a good point to check in general because security parameters have uh, nothing to do from the point of uh, you know tool because it's an in-house tool or open source tool which you'll be using. And uh, security is not an area of concern for me right now compared to the other two options if you look at it compared to the last one. So putting it all together, the right answer here is C and D. Is it possible to execute some part of your test manually? And how much time do you have to rewrite it, which is from the point of ROI, as well as determining how much time do you have to convert the test from your custom built tools language to open source tool language? Well, that was a good interface to understand that how exactly the scenarios can be distributed among the questions. And I hope you have got a good idea to understand the same. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.